Good morning, Faith Lutheran Church. Good morning. Good to have everybody here. Good to see you here, Bonnie. That's, uh, yeah, great. So I think we have council this week. Is it this week? Is it? Yeah, Tuesday. Okay, so a little reminder there to council members. Um, today, back to school. The kids have been at school a couple days, and so we want to celebrate that. So we have some games outside and prizes. Prizes too. Can I have a ooh, prizes, prizes? Yeah. And then next week, no, is it next week already? Yeah, yeah, it's Lua at uh, Guar is there, so then Redlands. So if you can go, there's a sign up in the back, and we would appreciate that. And speaking of sign ups, here's her. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you get a shot at the chancel choir again starting in September. There's a sign. That depends on you all. <laughs> There's a sign up sheet out in the narthex. It is open to anybody from high school through whatever age adult with a moderate familiarity with reading music. Um, this is a choir, so I need a minimum of six to eight people. So give it some thought. We would start the Sunday after Labor Day. This would be Sunday morning, 9 a.m. rehearsal, so you don't have to come out during the week after 7 p.m. when I get off work. Okay, so we're going to try it. If enough people sign up to do a choir, we will start simply. We would rehearse every Sunday at 9 a.m., but sing maybe every other Sunday and see how it goes. So it is up to you. If you know other people who have not yet arrived, who might have singing ability and um, no reading ability, ask them to think about it and to sign up. I'll give it, some, give it a shot, okay? But it is all up to you. I can't make a choir by myself, okay? We'd love, love to lead you, but I need mean, the people to sing. So let me know. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we have been negligent in mugging Evan, who's been coming. So, Evan, I'm sorry you didn't get mugged previously. But you're pretty good size, so it's hard to get volunteers. You know, to help with the mugging. But actually, what we do is we give them a mug. Can you say, aw? Aw, that sounds better than old people trying to beat you up. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Charlotte's gonna help out with games today, I think, right? Yeah, okay, super. And the week after that uh, is CCLM Sunday, so we'll have somebody here from uh, CCLM on the 27th. And I want to thank the quilters. They meet on Tuesdays and they have so far 15 quilts for those uh, homeless men that are there. So, anyway, really appreciate all that effort. Um, I think that's it, so let's stand for our opening hymn.
be gone until we worship God. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season. Whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have spawned your blessings, we have afforded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed.
So, when the waves come in and kind of knock you out or something sad happens at school or somewhere else, just take a moment. That's what Jesus did. He had some sad thing happen in his life and he just took a moment to be with God. And there's a song about that. It goes like this. Everybody can participate. This is the end I breathe. This is the end I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. That's how it goes. You want to just sing a little bit? Of it? <laughs> this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. So what had happened is uh, John the Baptist had been beheaded sad thing. So Jesus went off into the desert and he prayed. And that kind of breathing in God's presence is kind of like a hot air balloon. If you've been, ever been on a hot air balloon? Yeah, I'm not too excited about that. <laughs> or you have been? How many hot air balloons do we have? Here, okay. <laughs> the reason I'm not so nervous in hot air balloons is that they had one at a bank opening. Uh, this is way back in Nebraska. The wind was blowing a fair amount. <laughs> the balloon took off and it was a dot in the sky in just a few minutes. Of, and the eye, I mean, the eyes of the bank, banker's wife was as big as the balloon. I think, just watching that go off. But anyway, it kind of lifts you up. And Jesus, what happened to him is he goes walking on the waves. After he kind of takes this moment with God and he's kind of lifted up, just like a hot air balloon or something surfing over the waves. So he's able to walk across the waves. Isn't that something? And uh, there is another person at the same time that we're going to read about today. His name was Elijah. He, on the other hand, felt disappointment in his life. And he went out to the desert. And he really didn't kind of seeking out the presence of God like Jesus did to kind of lift him up. He was just really depressed. And so he goes into this cave. And uh, God has to come to him. So he doesn't really seek God out so much as God comes to him. And God speaks to him, not an earthquake, wind, or fire, but a little still voice. He hears the voice of God. And that lifts him up. And in the end, he thought he was all by himself. Nobody else was experiencing life like he was. In the end, there's Elisha. I had to include Elisha today because we got Elisha. And Elisha followed him. He got to see him go up to heaven, so he was kind of raised up by the Spirit of God. So anyway, when the school starts and you get things going on and stuff like that, if there's a disappointing day, just let the breath of God come into you like Jesus did, or God come to you like the for Elijah, and that can lift up. He lifted Jesus above the waves and lifted Elijah into the sky. Because what, uh, and it even lifted Paul to, a uh, Peter, I should say, he went into the water, and uh, he was held up. Now that's why we have people in church too, because it's not you just having to seek God out by yourself, you're not all by yourself like Elijah thought he was. you got all these people around you to support you. And I was thinking of your grandpa, so you look at all the people that are at the funeral there, supporting each other. It's a beautiful thing. So you don't have to be in school and think you're all by yourself. you got the presence of God, and then all these people here, and uh, your supportive friends too. So we're not alone, which people that can help you out. So let's pray for that and receive that gift. Lord, we do thank you for being with us in this life. The waves hit us sometimes and we can just sort of topple over. It helps us to remember that we're not alone in this and that we can breathe your breath into our lives and walk over the waves that hit us. In your name we pray. Amen.
came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elisha? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for your Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, and Abel, Mehola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Yehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel. All the knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly from Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and those who Turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, and to the Lord be all of our Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God. The next reading is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they going to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? It, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I to the stamp of God. <laughs>
disciples in into the boat and go ahead on the other side to see a gallery, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up a mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there all alone. But by, the by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. And while the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not fear. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, caught him, and saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. May be seated. Grace and peace from God our Creator and Christ our Redeemer. Now, the start of the Gospel starts after the feeding of 5,000, which we read about a little ahead because we're recognizing the pantry and all the good work, and we have pantry again on Saturday, so thank you for all that wonderful effort. But Jesus, what he was really trying to do was get off in the desert by himself, because John the Baptist had been beheaded, and he wanted to greet. But he went out into the desert, and the whole crowd follows him out there. And that's when he notices, hey, there's nothing for these guys to eat, so let's get them something. And he feeds the 5,000 on that moment. Well, he does, after that, finally get his moment to mourn the passing of John the Baptist. And as he does that, the sun sets, and he then goes walking out on the waves. And just a, a word to us, as we hit those times in our lives when we're sorrow and we're burdened down, it's, uh, and the waves are hitting us, really. The way to be lifted above the waves is to breathe in the breath of God. This is the air I breathe, your holy presence in my life. So that's what Jesus is praying for in those moments by himself. So at dusk he goes out, and uh, yeah, maybe we can sing that one more time, just together. This is the air I breathe, this is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me. I think we got some choir people here, I think we can do that. But it kind of lifts you up just like that hot air balloon, you know, just lifting you above the troubles so you get this bigger image of God's presence in your life. And like Paul writes in Romans, he's not going to leave you, he's there for you, and uh, not be separated from that. I love this verse from the psalm too. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness comes down from the sky. And so hopefully in those moments you feel that, as the psalmist felt it. And there's plenty of times in the psalmist, they're just full of people that have had troubles in their lives, but they recognize that they can breathe in the breath of God, and that lifts them up on those occasions. Well, as Jesus is walking out, the disciples are struggling here in the wind, and so they're having trouble with the waves. Jesus is kind of above the waves of life that hit us. And if you have God's presence, that helps you get above those waves that can pound on our lives. So the disciples are struggling. Jesus comes walking out. He, they think he's a ghost initially, which one would think, you know, somebody walking on the water. The thing that really gets me is that uh, Peter wants to give it a whirl. 
I'm not one, you know, not real excited about bungee cords, not necessarily excited about hot air balloons. Once I saw that one, you just go about 20 miles in two minutes, you know, up in the sky. And uh, so it's something for Peter. Of all the disciples, he's the one that takes the risks. And he wants to walk with Jesus. Well, it doesn't last for very long, and down the waves he goes. But he is, has at least has this. He says, Lord, save me. He goes to Jesus to ask him to save him. And uh, that's what Jesus did. He took that moment out to seek out the presence of God. And now Peter, in this moment, asks God to be there, save him. And Jesus reaches out his hand and indeed saves him. So, Jesus' word to him is that you doubt it, right? Did you doubt it? Well, you know, the waves are coming and that sort of thing. So sometimes in our lives we do doubt it. But he did reach out to God. Versus Elijah. And that's the contrast I want to take. Here, Elijah gives up. He actually asks in the verses before our reading today, I've had enough, take my life, I'm done. This is Elijah speaking. Now, he had had some great moments. He took on Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, the king, and that was a real conflict there, and the, he says there's gonna be a drought, and there was for three years a drought in the land. And you might remember the story, even the place where Elijah thinks he has a little spring there, he can have something for himself. That dries up, so he has to go all the way to Zarephath. He meets a woman who's taken up sticks to make the last meal for her and her son. They're going to be done. This is it. And Elijah comes along and asks her to be a part of that meal. Now, I don't know if I were you, say you go to the pantry and there's only one serving in there. Are you going to you know, give it to somebody or you're going to keep it for yourself. She has a generous heart and shares with him. And then you might remember the story, well, then it never runs out. They have that for the rest of the time that they're there. But waves keep crashing in on Elijah's life, and this woman's son gets deathly ill. He raises up the son from death. And after that, he feels like he can go back to Israel. So he brings back the word of God. He, the altar has been torn down, it's in disarray. So he has to build that back up. And so what he said in our text today is that everybody's given up on you, Lord. Nobody is, cares about you anymore. I'm the only one. And, you know, this is a symbol of that, that there was nothing happening, and this poor altar is in disarray. Um, but mercy and truth meet each other in this text. Uh, he takes on the priests of Baal, they go dancing around their altar, even cutting themselves as they're dancing and trying to get their God to recognize something's going on. Elijah just prays, he's got water around the altar, he's got water in another ditch beyond that, he's got the sacrifice drenched in the water, he just prays and it all goes up. Wonderful success for him. And uh, it's even the end of the drought. He points to a little, little cloud over the horizon, and phew, here comes this drenching rain. So it's a wonderful victory for him. So, <laughs> you know, powerful moment. He's here, he's had the victory against all the priests of Baal. He's had the rain that's come down. And still, Jezebel is ticked with him, so he has to go out into the desert. And that's where he's kind of had enough. He's in this cave. He won this great victory, raised up this widow's son, never ran out of food. So a lot of beautiful things happen, but he's done. He's done with it. It doesn't seem to make any difference. And so sometimes in our lives we get to that point, you know, the waves hit us and we're just so done. I'm just done with this. And he asks God, just finish it off. Because I'm the only, I'm the only guy. I'm the only guy. And when we're at those kind of points, just to remember that Elisha was not right. He wasn't the only guy. And you're not all alone. You got all these people right here, for one thing. You got the church of God, you got uh, people of faith. And so God comes to him, not in the earthquake, wind, or fire, but in a little small voice. So sometimes it takes a little attention on our part to hear the voice of God and say, continue on. 
because he's, <laughs> he's found in that breath. And that is enough to have him go on and he continues his ministry and finally in the end he's taken up in a fiery chariot. So, you know, he has breathed in the breath of God and off he goes into, not into the sunset, but kind of into the sun itself, you know, just, uh, as a matter of fact, when you do Passover, they have a seat for Elijah because maybe he's coming back, you know, he was just taken in that way. What was better about Peter is he said, Lord, save me, not Lord, do me in. I'm the only guy, but Lord, save me. And why could he say that? Because he had, with Jesus, breathed in the breath of God. And sure, he didn't have enough faith to keep him over the waves. I don't know that either. But he did have people in the boat with him. And uh, why did you have such little faith, you know? And Peter did show signs of little faith from time to time. But he always went back to say, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And he had Jesus beside him at all those moments. So just a word to remember that Jesus is by our side. We're not alone in this thing. God's presence is there. Jesus found that when John the Baptist was killed. Peter called out for that. And Elijah discovered it. Not in a big deal, brick, wind, or fire, but just in a little voice. He finally discovered that too. When God holds our hand, he doesn't let go. He'll never let go of your hand and you're not alone. That's the other thing that Jesus made sure the disciples understood. We're not in this all by ourselves. Uh, we have this whole church here. We have the church of God throughout the world. Jesus didn't call one disciple and say, or he didn't know to do it all by himself. There were 12. So Peter knew that he had other people with him. And we do too. We have people that walk with us on this, on this journey. And Jesus said, there's going to be other people too, so feed my sheep. Paul asked for that too in the text to Romans. Go out with the word, share this word. Because a lot of people feeling pretty lonely, you know, after COVID and all that, that happened. They have to maybe bounce back into relationships like they had before. So we need to be about that word that uh, you're not alone in this life. Not, shouldn't be like Elijah, stuffed in some cave, you know, watching Zoom or whatever. You've got the people of God with you in this world. So God is with us. We're part of the uh, body of Christ. And I thought this is a really cute image of, uh, you know, we're holding hands in the waves. We're not in the waves all by ourselves. Even during COVID, we're here for each other. Remember those days <laughs> wheeling on the TV? Whew. I'm kind of glad those are over, you know. So we can stand the waves when they hit us. Don't lose the faith. Be like Peter. Remember, Lord save me, and that he has other people with him in the boat too. God's hands there for us. I like this saying from St. Augustine, Hyman. It says, he who does not have the church as his mother doesn't have God as his father. I wouldn't put it that way. Because God is our father, we have church as our mother for us, and we can be in this together. And those tough times can bring actually for us a deeper faith if you let it happen. Like it did for Peter, his faith kept getting deeper and deeper because he risked out for himself. Let's pray for that. Lord, we are in a world constantly changing. There's waves that hit us uh, from all directions sometimes. Sometimes maybe we feel very alone like Elijah. And we just ask that you would uh, walk with us, remind us, Help us to breathe in your presence into our lives and to remember that you gave us the body of Christ, these people around here to support us. And so we place our journey of life in your hands, trusting in your mercy, in your son's name. Amen.
joys and concerns. Let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of sky and sea, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains, proclaim your glory. Prosper the work of the ecologists who, as they teach us new ways to care for the environment. Bring relief to areas recovering from national disasters, especially Maui and Lahaina. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. Install in local, regional, national, and global political and civic leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O oh God. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and so soothe any who are sick, especially Jeannie, Joe, Eloise, Linda, Becky, Donna, Jessica, Kira, Gloria, Carolyn, Brenda, Lucas, Rebecca, Chris, Heather, Bonnie and Brooke. Hear us, O oh God. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life. You send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service as examples of following your call. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all of whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another.
thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on Sunday overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so of all the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven and the church on earth, we will praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed, keep, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen.